Intro puns about murder aren't funny, sadly. Well, unless properly executed. What's going on YouTube? Today we're going to be talking about something that was suggested actually by you guys, and that is looting those civilians. They make you have the ability to kill a lot of civilians in the Elder Scrolls Online, but is there a purpose to do so? Is there a strategy to do so? And what is the benefit for doing so? And that's what we're going to be talking about in this video. Before we jump into the video, this is a quick reminder to like and subscribe. We're on the road to 15,000 subscribers, and we are so close to that milestone. And conceptually, this is actually exceptionally easy for you guys to do. So, basically, all you're going to do is kill civilians. We'll talk about a couple places you can go to do so, one of which being uh, right here. If it wasn't uh, abundantly obvious by uh, all the dead bodies here. So, what do people do with these characters that they kill all these civilians? Well, it actually boils down to something relatively straightforward, and that's selling stolen goods. You can, if you would so choose to, loot. A whole bunch of stolen goods if you would want to and then you could pickpocket people for them you could you know pick them up in the overland through urns or alternatively you can commit mass uh murder which words will probably get my video demonetized and you can get the stolen goods that way so what people do is they have these characters that rack up these exceptionally high bounties and then they just slow sell those stolen goods throughout the week so then to put it simply, then you just take those stolen goods to a fence. You're going to find those bad boys in literally any refuge, and then you're going to sell all of those stolen goods. Now, you'll notice that I am capped to selling 140 a day, and that's why this method is so unique, is because people will utilize different characters and basically keep them filled with stolen goods that they've slaughtered from people, and then they will sell them passively throughout the week after the item sold has reset. So what are some passives that make this a little bit more efficient? First one you're gonna want is Trafficker, which if the video wasn't demonetized or me saying mass murder, a Trafficker is probably definitely not helping because you're gonna be able to sell more items per day on that character. Next up, we're in the Thieves Guild line, which is technically a DLC line. You don't have to have these, but these certainly do make it a little bit easier. And that is Swiftly Forgotten. Now, you don't necessarily have to have this because generally people just leave these with extremely high bounties and they just kind of wash their hands of that character and just use them as a little bit of passive income throughout the week. But if you also just want to kind of have them stand around, uh, their bounty will decrease with Swiftly Forgotten very fast. Haggling is just another really good one also. You get more bang for your buck when you're selling goods, which is always going to be helpful for you. Another one that you can also consider too, because there's no harm in picking it up, is Dark Brotherhood Scales of Pitless Justice. Basically, committing murder, it's just, it's not as bad for you. It's kind of like having a really good lawyer, like, yeah, you're going to get in trouble, but not, not like as much. They're going to find a loophole for you to get you in a little bit less trouble. Uh, it's helpful for utilizing on characters where you're like, eh, I want this bounty to go down faster. That way I can use this character again for other things, you know, a little bit quicker if I would want to in the future again. And what was interesting is when I was setting up for this video, I actually noticed that this group of people was actually doing this as a group together, which actually was something I had never considered because as long as everyone does a little bit of damage, everyone's able to loot those bosses. Keep in mind that those little civilians, the boxes that they're going to have on them are worth a couple hundred gold each. So what you just witnessed was a, a couple thousand gold, you know, worth of a pool, and it was only done in a few moments. And before I show you some of the best places to do that, keep in mind that every single body here, which was accumulated very quickly, can be worth upwards of 100 to 500 gold each. So you really start to can get a lot of value as they are kite these bad boys in. Now, you obviously are going to have a bounty pretty much equal to that, but you don't plan to go into town and you don't plan to utilize that character and you don't are okay you know letting the heat die down if you do need to use them again this can be pretty profitable and you don't have to just use this on one character you take three characters cap out the amount of gold that you can get through fencing every day and you can really start to make some good money so the number one place in my opinion to do this is at the hadrans caravan you can see there's already people here doing it and you can also see, too, that really doing this as a group doesn't really impede your ability to farm this together. So sometimes I feel like I get a little a couple angry comments when I post furnishing routes and whatnot. People are like, 
you're going to ruin it. Everyone's going to come here now. It's like, well, there's already many people doing it. I think we're good. I also want to point out, too, that that furnishing plan route that is still uber busted in High Isle is still there. So unless they plan to patch it in a year from now when the High Isle plans are worth like pennies on the dollar, pretty sure we're good. Okay, Pretty sure we're okay here, people. Another really popular place that you can find helpless civilians with zero guards is actually right outside Dragon Star Arena, which is also nice because it's not a DLC area, which means that anyone can go here. And that's actually what I really like about this gold method is, is a lot of you guys have extra characters that they're not doing anything. So why not become a mass criminal? I mean, like, how many career options do you have as a level 10 character who your account owner is like, mm, do I want to play, you know, Warden? I'm not really feeling this. So what's what better use than to take him outside of Dragon Star Arena, rack up a 200k bounty, and then slow sell all of those goods, you know, throughout the time period? But uh, could you think of a better use for a level 10 Warden? I certainly couldn't. Another good notable area is Tangle Haven. It's really nice because, hey, they don't believe in guards. Why would you? And uh, the actual respawn rate here is noticeably pretty high, so you can take advantage of that if you're looking for another spot to do this in. And now my favorite spot, because it is actually inside of a quest area, so you pretty much have free reign to do whatever you want here, that's the Ataru Estates in Stormhaven. Now, you've got tons of nobles, just do whatever you want with, but there is a twist, and that twist is, is there are guards over on the side portion. So this is really probably a better pickpocketing spot than a mass murder spot but if you take away the few guards that really kind of hover over on this portion over here it's still an amazing spot there's no competition and as we kind of touched upon nobles give you items that are generally worth a higher amount so you can either pickpocket them or kill them with the blade of well and because of how spaced out they are you can still easily avoid those prying eyes of those little guards but what did you guys think? Obviously, this is a very popular method on console to farm gold. It's not as utilized on PC because of inflation being significantly higher, but it also requires no DLCs, and it can give yourself almost passive income because you can farm hundreds of stolen items that just passively sell them throughout the week versus actually having to actively farm gold. So a lot of people might be more inclined to grind you know, for a whole day and then slow sell throughout the week on a few characters. So what do you guys think? Is this something that interests you? More so, are you interested in more uh, different kind of unique gold methods in the game? I remember when I first started playing ESO, now I wouldn't suggest this these days, but filling soul gems was a very lucrative gold method. So gold methods kind of rise and fall, and this is one that I still think has a lot of merit, so I figured we'd cover it today uh, in a video. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, as a quick reminder, we're doing our giveaway drawings for the month. We are doing our traditional random subscriber, random comment. But we are also going to be hiding a message in one of the videos in the month of July. So if you are the first person to comment that, well, then you win. And then, uh, you know, it might be in a couple videos, might be the last video of the month, might have been in the video previously. You never know. I'm going to make it fast and very sneaky to really give you guys, you know, for those of you who watch all the videos intently and actually, you know, stop by for all the videos, something to look out for because I love you guys and I'll catch you later. Bye guys. You better remember to like and subscribe to Jake Clips. Or you should. I might have to pluck your eyes if you don't. Or better yet, I'll skip rope with your entrails. Do it now. Subscribe. Ta-ta. Off with you. So let me know what you guys think. I was thinking about reviving the uh, Golden Curiosity series because there's so many items in ESO that I think are so unique and cool that I really wanted to highlight them. I was actually thinking about this when I was doing the kind of brainstorming for this video. Like the Shivering Cheese is an item, for example, that I have been hunting for forever. And I thought, you know, that could be a really cool kind of discussion to have, you know, per video, like a video on the Shivering Cheese, you know. A video on some of these items that are worth like millions of gold, tens of millions of gold, you know, more dedicated videos on them. Now, I'm, I'm not going to be able to farm all of them because there's a reason why they're so lucrative, unfortunately, but I really did enjoy that series. So let me know what you guys think and I might, uh, might bring it back.